Landing a jet on the deck of a moving aircraft carrier is one of the most thrilling and dangerous tasks in aviation. It's a high-stakes operation where both human skill and cutting-edge technology must work together seamlessly, with the margin for error razor thin. Most of the time, everything goes smoothly, but when things go wrong, they can go very wrong. With only a small space to bring jets to a stop, the arresting gear system plays a critical role in safely decelerating aircraft traveling at over 150 miles per hour in just a few seconds. But how does this system work? And what happens when it fails? What if a crucial arresting cable snaps under pressure, sending a jet hurtling toward the sea? At the core of the arresting system are three key components working together. The arresting cables, purchase cables, and the arresting engine. When an aircraft approaches the carrier, it deploys a tail hook, a specialized hook designed to engage the arresting cables. These arresting cables, also called cross-deck pendants, are stretched across the deck and are made of tough yet flexible steel, about one to one and a half inches thick. But once the tail hook snags the cable, the system takes over, transferring the aircraft's forward momentum into a controlled deceleration. So what happens next? This is where the purchase cables come into play. These cables connected to the arresting cables run beneath the flight deck. As the arresting cable is pulled, the purchase cables unwind, transmitting the force from the aircraft to the arresting engine. The arresting engine is the powerhouse of the system. It's a hydraulic marvel designed to absorb the immense energy of the landing aircraft and bring it to a stop without damaging either the plane or the deck. The engine consists of a hydraulic ram and a cylinder filled with fluid. As the purchase cable pulls the ram into the cylinder, the hydraulic fluid flows through a control valve, which adjusts the system's resistance based on real-time data. This finely tuned process ensures that the aircraft slows down gradually, avoiding the shock of a sudden stop. What makes this system truly impressive is its ability to adapt to different aircraft. Not all jets weigh the same, so a one-size-fits-all approach just wouldn't work. That's why calibration is so critical. Before each landing, the arresting gear is adjusted according to the weight and speed of the aircraft. The control valve inside the arresting engine is fine-tuned to provide just the right amount of hydraulic resistance, ensuring a smooth and safe stop no matter which aircraft is coming in. In just a few seconds, this system transforms the raw momentum of a high-speed jet into a manageable force, bringing the aircraft safely to a halt on the carrier's deck. Just a quick moment before we move on. If you're new here and you like this content, consider subscribing to sustain our work and help us create more videos like this. Now that we've seen how the arresting gear system works, let's look at what happens when things go wrong. The USS George Washington incident in 2003 serves as a vivid reminder of the risks involved in carrier landings, even with a well-designed system in place. On September 11, 2003, what began as a routine operation aboard the USS George Washington quickly took a dangerous turn. An F-A-18 Hornet was landing on the carrier when its tail hook engaged one of the arresting cables. But disaster struck. The cable snapped. Without the necessary tension to stop the jet, the Hornet rolled off the flight deck and plunged into the sea. Fortunately, the pilot ejected just in time and was rescued shortly after. But the danger wasn't confined to the aircraft. The broken cable whipped violently across the deck, striking several crew members. Seven sailors sustained injuries, three of them severe enough to require evacuation. The force of the recoiling cable, resulting in broken bones and other serious injuries, demonstrated just how hazardous these incidents can be for everyone on deck, even during routine operations. An investigation traced the failure to a malfunction in the arresting engine. In this case, the engine failed to properly regulate the cable's tension, resulting in excessive strain. When the tension reached critical levels, the cable snapped under the pressure. The root cause was pinpointed as a flaw in the system's calibration, highlighting the importance of precise adjustments to prevent such dangerous failures. On March 18, 2016, another serious incident on board a U.S. aircraft carrier, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, underscored just how critical it is for these systems to perform flawlessly. During routine flight operations, an E-2C Hawkeye, an essential aircraft for the fleet's airborne surveillance, was coming into land. The tail hook latched onto the final arresting cable, but instead of a controlled stop, things went wrong. The cable gave way under the immense force and for a few heart-stopping moments, it seemed the Hawkeye would plunge into the ocean. Fortunately, the pilot managed to recover control, narrowly avoiding what could have been a devastating crash. The situation on deck, however, turned grim. 
The recoiling cable lashed across the flight deck with immense force, hitting eight sailors. The injuries were severe, ranging from broken bones to a fractured skull, requiring immediate medical attention. The subsequent investigation pointed to a miscalibrated arresting engine. In this instance, the engine applied far too much tension, pushing the cable beyond its designed limits. Unable to withstand the excessive strain, the cable snapped. In the wake of the USS Eisenhower incident, the U.S. Navy launched a fleet-wide review of its arresting gear systems, focusing on maintenance protocols and calibration procedures. The existing procedures were deemed overly complex, increasing the likelihood of human error. As a result, new guidelines were introduced to simplify calibration tasks and ensure that the arresting engines were properly adjusted for each type of aircraft. This proactive approach helped reduce the risk of similar failures in the future, making carrier landings not only safer for the pilots, but also for the entire flight deck crew. In the end, it's a lesson in just how finely tuned and carefully maintained these systems must be to ensure the safety of everyone on board. As aircraft technology has advanced, so too have the systems designed to support these operations. The Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG for short, is the Navy's modern response to the growing demands of carrier-based aviation. Installed on Ford-class carriers, this next-generation system addresses many of the limitations of the older hydraulic arresting gear used on Nimitz-class carriers. But why was this modernization necessary? The traditional hydraulic arresting gear served the Navy well for decades, but as aircraft became heavier and faster, its limitations became increasingly obvious. While reliable, the older system required frequent maintenance and lacked flexibility when it came to handling different types of aircraft, especially with the growing use of unmanned aerial vehicles. With aircraft now ranging from lightweight drones to much heavier jets, the need for a more adaptable system became clear. The Navy required a technology that was not only more precise and reliable, but also capable of handling the diversity of modern naval aviation. That's where the AAG comes in. Unlike its predecessor, which relied heavily on hydraulics, the AAG uses electric motors and water turbines to absorb the energy from landing aircraft. This shift offers several key advantages. First, the electric motors are inherently more reliable and reduce the number of mechanical components that can wear out over time. Fewer moving parts mean fewer opportunities for failure, which translates into more consistent performance over longer periods. Another major benefit of this new system is its reduced maintenance needs. The old hydraulic system required constant upkeep with extensive checks and repairs after a certain number of landings. In contrast, the AAG's electric components coupled with real-time monitoring systems allow for more proactive maintenance. The system can identify issues before they become problems, minimizing downtime and keeping operations running more smoothly. Perhaps the most impressive improvement is the ability to handle a wider range of aircraft, from lightweight UAVs to much heavier fighter jets. The system's electric motors can precisely adjust the amount of resistance, making it possible to safely arrest a broad spectrum of aircraft weights and speeds. But as with any cutting-edge technology, the AAG hasn't been without its challenges. The implementation on Ford-class carriers experienced its share of growing pains. As expected with new technology, there were initial technical difficulties and delays that needed to be ironed out. Moreover, the increased complexity of the system means that sailors now require specialized training to operate and maintain it effectively. While the AAG is designed to be more reliable and require less maintenance, its advanced technology also means troubleshooting issues can be more complicated than with the older hydraulic systems. But as always, the Navy's proactive approach to training ensures crews will master this new system. And speaking of training, it's worth remembering that training and crew preparedness are vital components of safe and effective carrier operations. The complexities of landing high-speed jets on a moving carrier deck require not only technical expertise, but also rigorous, continuous training for both flight deck crews and pilots. No amount of advanced equipment can replace the value of well-prepared crews. One of the most important aspects of this preparation is the ongoing drills that flight deck crews regularly undergo. These drills simulate emergency scenarios, training crew members to react swiftly and efficiently, reducing the risk of injury. The importance of these drills was clearly demonstrated during the USS Eisenhower incident, where the quick response of the deck crew, trained to hit the deck at the first sign of danger, likely prevented a higher number of serious injuries. In addition to real-time drills, simulators play a crucial role in training both flight deck crews and pilots. 
In the end, the safety of carrier operations relies on a combination of technology and human skill. Advanced equipment can only go so far. The key to success lies in the hands of well-trained, highly prepared crews.